everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. It indeed is, but today we're playing a video game? Yeah. That's weird. Today we're doing a video game called Fists of Jesus. Yeah, uh, so this got gifted to me a while back, and someone's like, you should play it on, on Unpopular Culture, and we're like, well, it makes more sense if we do it on this channel. Yeah. And also, uh, I think you guys would be interested in it. It's kind of a fun game. I don't know. We're just doing something different because we just want to change it up. Yeah, and we're going to be answering questions also while we do it. So it's yeah. not just like a let's play. We're going to be yeah. answering questions from Ask Hugo yeah. and a, other videos. It's a, it's a pretty simple game. So basically, we're just beating up zombies. Yeah. Uh, the whole the whole point of this is uh, you're Judas and and Jesus. You can see down here. I played a little bit. I'm a, I'm level eleven already. Uh, but you have stuff that you can upgrade. They have their different powers, like a Jesus explosion, and uh, Judas has. Judas Kameha. We get it. So I mean, it's 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 not be, to be taken serious. And the, the the very the I guess the the point of this game is that Jesus resurrects Lazarus, and then Lazarus is evil and makes zombies happen. And now it's Jesus and Judas fighting zombies. The show would be better if that was actually in the Bible. Indeed. So I guess we're just gonna continue and see how it goes yeah. while we talk, and we're just so we're just gonna fuck around. And, this is like we're just playing a game. Yeah, we'll answer your questions. So here we go. So, Aiden Crane asks us, Dear Hugo and or Jack, it's always nice when they call you Jack. I think it's I think I that's think, a TJ thing. I think so. Oh god, he's huge. I think you'd make a better Jack than a Jake. You look more like Jack. Yeah? Yeah. It's a stronger name for a man. Ripped his fucking heart out. Good job. Sorry. Anyways. I know this sounds sort of weird. I had a dog named Jack. <laughs> Just saying. Relevant. It is! I, I, okay. It's a strong name. I know this sounds sort of weird, but what is your favorite war? Personally, my favorite war is World War II. I absolutely love the Panzer Kampfwagen 6, the Tiger Tank. So what's your favorite war? Peloponnesian War. Why the Peloponnesian War? Not the Peloponnesian War. They weren't friends. The Peloponnesian, Peloponnesian War? Peloponnesian War. Why do you like the that Peloponnesian war? Peninsula. Uh, because it's, it's someone telling... So uh, rip, rip hearts. That's what I do. Uh, it's 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 because it was um, the tr uh, not Troy. What the fuck is what's the the three hundred? I can't remember the name of them because I'm playing Spartans. This game. Thank you. Uh, it was when Sparta is like, hey Athens, you're a bunch of douchebags and I hate you. Therefore, wartime. Uh, because the Athenians in the uh, during that time were kind of cunts to everyone and they thought they were better than everyone. To be fair. They were kind of better than everyone. Heart rip! Oh, skulls, bitch. Taking your spine out. And, I don't know, I just like it. I just, I, I enjoy it. And, uh, there's a lot of funny things that happened during that time. And, you know, I'm not gonna go through a history lesson. That's my favorite war. What's your favorite war, Hugo? American Civil War. The American that's Civil War. That's my number two, actually. That's my favorite for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's one of the last big, big American wars that's uh, pre-industrial, let's say. Certainly, industry had begun, but it's not on the scale of something like World War One, obviously. Right. Um, and also, I like it because there's a pretty clear good and bad guy. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying everyone in the South was bad. I'm saying that the goals, pretty clearly bad. And yeah, I, I, it's always interesting to me when people say it's a states' rights issue. It's states' rights to own slaves. Like yeah. I, I get what you're saying, but you're wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's just very interesting, very interesting time in American history, and especially to consider what may have happened if it had gone different differently. Though it probably wouldn't have if the South had gained independence, it would have gone bankrupt within the decade, probably. Oh, but, for sure. Uh, but it would have been interesting to see what would have happened in the fallout of that. Too bad Lincoln got shot right after that. He probably would have helped with the rebuilding and whatnot, but instead he died. And all those damn carpetbaggers. Carpetbaggers. I don't know. I don't uh, know. I, I, think, I think if we're going to keep talking about wars, though, um, because I could talk about wars forever, if, if I'm not going... Head rip. If I'm not going um, <laughs> uh, uh, Civil War for my number two, hmm. I think I, everyone's interested in World War Two. I think because it, just it's just one of the those humongous wars that ruined everything. Yeah, 
You know, and it, that it, shaped, it set us back. That shaped the 20th century and beyond Head irrevocably. Rip. Pretty much shaped the entire 20th century and beyond, and it just fucked shit up. On the bright side, though, I think it was something that ended up making us say, hey, let's not just have ground wars all the time. <laughs> also nuclear weapons, but yeah, that's a different story. I, I, I think if we were going to have a gigantic war, I think 1945 is one of the best years for it to end. Damn it. I'm not timing this correctly. Yeah, go a, little, go a couple years beyond that and we're just fucked entirely. Yeah, because, I mean, technology got to the point where, yeah, it was really bad when when we started to really fight and and like between the allies and the nazis they had a, like tons of just ingenuity by by way of like well i guess with the purpose of murdering each other so <laughs> it's just it's so good that that maybe we didn't get as far as te like, technologically as, as we would have yeah. had it happened much later so i don't know i think i think for the most part it's probably a good thing. A lot of these questions also, I should say, are about video games, because we usually get a lot of video game questions, but we don't, uh, <sighs> we don't get a chance to talk about them a lot. And since this is kind of a video game video, I figured I'd put those into this one. So, fair warning. I think most of the other ones, if not all of them, are video game related. Oh shit, he fucked me up a little bit. Prince of Pranks says, Dear Sir Hugo, and in this case Jake, because he's also involved. Am I am I a sir as well? No, you are a oh, surf. My, my title is Surf Jake. You are Surf Jake. Am I like like Keanu Surf Jake? Like, no. Surf Jake! You're like a peasant who's probably gonna die because they don't know that hand washing is good to do after you poop. Oh. Did you play Bioshock? If so, if so, what was your favorite part of it, or your least favorite part aspect? If not, what did you like to do with Jake in your spare time together? We'll answer both of those questions. I did play Bioshock and the sequels. Didn't most people? I think a lot of people did. I don't know if I'd say most people, but they were a very I mean, popular most, series. Most people in our demographic. Eh, maybe, but I think the first Bioshock was awesome for a couple of reasons. It was the first game I played that I really, really felt that... It, the plot and the atmosphere and the world yeah. was super integral to the story and I, i'm talking like non-rpg wise like certainly yeah. i played elder scrolls games before that where there's a lot of lore building but this was like a first person shooter that uh made the story um a huge part of it and i hadn't played like half-life before this bear in mind so i know half-life did it first i'm just saying bioshock was the first for me to do that um and that, that was awesome. The sequel, uh, Bioshock 2, I didn't think was very good just because it felt like it was a losing battle. Bioshock 1 was such a huge thing at the time, and it was so unique in that in the world of console first-person shooters, you didn't get these story-driven, uh, well-written games with these uh, interesting worlds. Yeah. Bioshock 2 just felt like more of the same, and it kind of wasn't as interesting because you played as, like, a big daddy. It just wasn't as good. Bioshock Infinite, however, I think was even better than the first one, and I think it told a very good story. Certainly is a little cliche, and is the twist uh, foreseeable? Yeah, but I think the characters are likable enough, and the world is interesting enough, and the mechanics are interesting enough that it pulls it through. And it makes me sad that I believe the studio that uh, did... Bioshock Infinite is now shut down. I think uh, 2K maybe owns the rights to that now. I hope they farm that out to a really, really good studio that can do it justice in the future yeah. because there's just infinite possibilities for that series, especially if you played Bioshock Infinite, you know sort of the premise and the ending. I'm not going to spoil it, but they can do pretty much whatever they want with that series now within certain guidelines. <laughs> so... Do the spaz zombie throwing knives at me. Yeah, he's doing a good job. <laughs> but... Uh, I really like those games. Did you play them? And uh, I, I, I definitely played them. I didn't play as much of them when they came out, though, because I didn't, um, at the time, uh, buy a lot of video games. Shit. Um, but I, I really, really enjoyed Infinite, even though, even though I think it's, it's kind of unfair. The, the first Bioshock is just so great, so it's hard to it's hard for me to be like, yeah, the other games were, were really great too, but 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 because Bioshock One was a thing, it made Infinite that much better. Does that make sense? 
Like you, I if you it. don't have Bioshock One, Infinite is kind of like. Okay, but I because but because of and again I'm not gonna spoil it, but because of the conclusion of that, it makes Bioshock One that much better, and therefore they infinite, complement each other. Yeah, totally. it works so much better like that. If it was a standalone game, really really well done game, polished, fun, had cool powers and weapons, had all that stuff, had a good story, but uh, it just you know, without Bioshock One, which is the crowning jewel of that. I I, I get what you're saying. I think, I, I think I enjoyed Bioshock Infinite. Even if it wasn't for Bioshock on its own, if they had retooled some stuff, because obviously there are connections between the two, if they had retooled it and made it a game in and of itself, I still think it would have been really good. Oh yeah, for sure, but I mean, it wouldn't be great. No, I, I get what you're saying. Do you want to play the training stage? I just played three levels, so... Sure, I'll play the training stage. Gotta kill 40 enemies. Uh, as far as the second part of the question, what do Jake and I do in our spare time? Oh, um... We watch movies sometimes. We do a lot of the... Honestly, most of the time we spend together now is probably on the show, but that doesn't yeah, mean it's just work. We enjoy we, it. We, we fuck around a lot more. Um, those guys are tough. You're probably gonna have to do I this. I think the right bumper is... Yeah, I died immediately. Just keep playing. Um, just try it a couple times. Sometimes... Key, our right bumper. There's I think. nothing on the right bumper. Out left bumper. Bumpers do nothing. Uh, oh, that? That. What was that? Were you doing the triggers or the bumpers? Oh, I thought that I missed. The triggers aren't. aren't Miscommunication. Aren't no, it wasn't. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but we do sometimes watch. Like last night, I was just watching something on Netflix and he sat and watched it for like an hour and a half with me. Yeah, it was the Houdini thing. That was cool. Yeah. Um, we, we hang out, but I mean, we live together, so. We also spend time apart on purpose. Yeah. Because, you know... We see each other all the fucking yeah, time. Yeah. And I mean, I'm going to be gone for a while after that. I'm sure when I get back, we'll hang out for a while. And, yeah. Without work. Then we'll get sick of each other. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it necessarily... It's not really sick, but, like... I don't know, like... Guys, you know what I'm talking about. You don't hang out with your friends every waking moment. Like... You're guys. Mm -hmm. Like, BFF guys aren't like BFF girls. Yeah. It's it's totally different. Like, we don't sit here and gossip or go out for coffee and hug. And hug? You think it, girls are just going Girls hug and, all the time. Not while they're drinking their coffee. Well, no. That'd not be, their that'd, iced frappuccinos. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, but uh, Hugo and I get, sometimes will go on a man date or something. Yeah. Uh, usually it's it's when uh, movie season comes out, though. We'll do a lot more of that. Like, we just... We, we actually, the other day, we ran to White Castle, which is about a 45-minute drive just one way, <laughs> just to... Get that, and we just hung out and kind of talked. And... White Castle is never a bad decision, but it's certainly not a good decision. No, it's oh, they have guns now. Yeah. Why are you? In... Why are we? Okay. This the narrative of this game just changed drastically, and, and now it's now it's is it post? zombie cowboys? Is it is it is it is this the part where like we're like they they come back? I don't know. Like this is this is right before the destruction of everything. No idea. But yeah, especially in movie season, we end up going to do stuff like Avengers is coming out yeah, like we'll, next month or the month after. We're certainly May, right May first. Yeah, we might a midnight show would be fun to do with for that. Yeah, I think we might actually. That's do the it. kind okay, of select. thing people have been asking. Select, them, select. People have been, yeah. people have been talking about unpopular culture, and mm -hmm. if we're still doing that, especially this summer with movie season, we're going to be doing a lot of movie reviews on that. Yeah, so. we got busy with the holidays and stuff, and just uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on in our lives, and we had to take care of, you know. Just a bunch of stuff. Actually, this this became like an official business just the other day. Yeah, we like, finally got our LLC. So, so and we're we have like contracts. Yeah, we're signing contracts on Tuesday. You don't need to know. It's, it's not that interesting all, to you it's guys. All but... Yeah, but it's just been a lot. So yeah. we've, we've kind of just been focusing on this channel, to, just to make sure that you know, because it's our living, and we didn't want to like, uh, you know, put out crap on unpopular culture just because. Yeah. Uh, because it wouldn't get the money. The amount of, uh, I guess, dedication that we try to put towards everything we do. Yeah. Because um, what? Well, we certainly don't have a high production value. I think. I think we the, put some stuff into it. Well, though, absolutely. You know I mean? But it's not like we have a very like the, the the format doesn't demand that we like animate or anything. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, so when we do do stuff, we, we hope that the, 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 the content of our words and the, you know, is good. So, like, if we're not feeling it one day, we just don't record. Yeah. Um, but, like, this whole last week, we've, we've done work every day on the show but one, I think. Yeah. 
So, I don't know, just kind of that's just how our life has been recently, but it'll it'll get a little less hectic as things become more more crystallized as far as what's going on with uh, our schedules and whatnot. And yeah. So, we'll, we're, we're definitely going to go back into unpopular culture, and we both really enjoy that channel. Also, we're going to have um, an intro at some point. Yeah, we already have the song for it. We're just waiting to get uh, it animated, or uh, not animated is the wrong word. Get it uh, kind of put together so put that together, we have, yeah. so Visually. We have a, a visual intro because we have a really badass theme song that we haven't showed you guys yet. Yeah. And we kind of feel like once we get that, it'll give us, I don't know, it makes it feel more like a real more channel. More like a real channel, yeah. Instead of just like a side project, which it really wouldn't be. You don't want to change characters. I know. I'm just trying to hold out as long as possible. Anyway, that's that question. We went all kinds of tangents on that, but you get it. This question from Friendship is Magic, who, surprise... Brony? Brony. Uh, which, that sounds condescending. It's not, but... No, I don't. If friend... you like My Little Pony, that's your thing. Yeah, I don't care, but, right, but, but he's not looking at it right now, and... It's called Friendship is Magic. So. Uh, he says, I don't get people who say Oblivion is better than Skyrim. There is literally nothing in Oblivion better than Skyrim. And I assume this is on your Ask Hugo when you Yeah, it was it when we time. talked about it. You're objectively wrong. Yeah. I uh, Oblivion is better than Skyrim in tons of ways. For I think the only way that, that Skyrim really... Is there's the, 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 the graphics and maybe the collision detection on the, on the melee. Yeah. Uh, Oblivion has just better world building if... If I can say that, uh, Skyrim felt like a pretty generic fantasy world, whereas Cyrodiil and Oblivion, even though the graphics aren't as good and the technology isn't as good, right. I felt like it w had its own identity. When you're in Skyrim, though, it just feels like here's a generic fantasy world with dragons. Um, and it's not a bad game. I really enjoy Skyrim. I just spent way more time in Oblivion. Not to mention the quests in Oblivion. I think were just way better. Like all the guild quests, for instance. Uh, you really felt like there was a story going on in the Thieves Guild and uh, the the with the Black Hand. Is that what yeah. it's called? Uh, but in Skyrim, it felt like it was an afterthought. It felt like, oh, we have to do guilds. We'll throw, like, five missions together. And there's a story, but you're not really interested in the characters, and it's pretty generic and dull. Yeah, I, I, I always felt like you were in the world, but not really a member of it. Yeah. Um, it, it never felt like... This is a hard one. Look. A problem with, uh... Skyrim 2 is, I think they did this to try and make it a better game, was the Radiant Quest is what they called it. It's their industry buzzword for randomly generated quests. It basically turned out to be, go find this random object in this random cave for this random person, which sounds like a good idea because it's like, oh, infinite quests, but basically all the quests just become generic fetch quests and it's not as yeah, interesting. Yeah, when I heard that, I thought that would be really cool. And really, the coolest things that they had were the uh, the crypts where you got the pieces of the amulet. Yeah. But that was like the very first mission that you can get from. But those, but those weren't even uh, radiant quests. Those I know were they scripted. weren't, and that's what scripted, I'm saying. Scripted. I get it. It's it's an issue of number of quests versus quality of quests, and they, I think the balance was just sort of off, in that uh, they went for too many quantity and not enough quality. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and that's my problem with it. Hopefully the next one will strike a better balance. Also, I think Ob Oblivion did certainly have problems. Obviously the physics are all kinds of fucked up. The leveling system is weird and doesn't work right, but the world was more fun, in my opinion, and the story was better. And Obliv and uh, uh, people at um, Bethesda, not the best story writers, but I still no, think... And they have a problem with getting shitty voice actors, or, oh, not a, yeah. or just like two. Like five voice actors for a world full of hundreds of NPCs. Go to a community college and find like 300 students no and pay them, pay them 100 bucks each. Like, come on, you could get it done. Next question. Paul White asks, Hey Hugo, are you big into movies? If you are, what's your opinion of some of the most popular movies today? The Marvel Cinematic Universe, Young young adult novel movies, etc. I am a huge fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I actually just marathoned with my girlfriend all like of all them, of them right? all of them to date, um, including the ones that aren't canon, like yeah, the well, Amazing... The past week, right? Yeah, the past week we actually sat down and watched them all. Uh, we watched The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 also, which aren't in canon because they're rebooting that in the cement right. cinematic universe. How but... do you feel about them rebooting Spider-Man again? I'm 
glad... I'm glad in... Marvel's getting it, but I, I hope they don't do an origin story. As long as it's not an origin story, it's great. Or if it is an origin story, the first ten minutes need to be the origin story and then just get on with it, because we get it. And I think the head the heads of Marvel Studios yeah. or whatever, they know what they're doing. They're, they're pretty spot on. They know people are sick of the origin story. We've seen it twice in the past ten years. We don't need to see it again. I hope not. I Plus, really... it's just, it's such a huge popular culture thing now, you know? Yeah, everyone knows. Bitten everyone by knows. a radioactive or genetically engineered spider. Uncle Ben dies. Blah, 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 blah. We get it. Angst. I... <laughs> you know what I really hope? I hope it's not Peter Parker. You want uh, Miles Morales? I do. Uh, so I, interesting. I kind of like Peter Parker, but I, I have I, nothing against Miles Morales. I, I like, think he's cool, I like but... handing the torch to him to Miles Morales. I just and, think and it's and then getting rid of Peter Parker. It'd be interesting. What I would like is if it started out with Peter Parker, like even just the right. first ten minutes of the movie, and yeah. then he died, and then the movie is about Miles Morales. And you don't even have to get an actor for Spider-Man, so just have a dude in a Spider-Man suit that maybe even looks like the one from The Amazing Spider-Man, have him killed, imply that was the Andrew Garfield Peter Parker sure. without getting him, and then have Miles Morales come in and take over, and then it's his story, and he's the cinematic Marvel Cinematic Universe Spider-Man. That's yeah. interesting, and that's a good way to do it while circumventing the traditional or origin story yeah um but beyond that beyond the spider-man movies uh i do like the cinematic universe are they brilliant films that are going to be remembered in the annals I think of guardians filmmaking was. guardians is really good but guardian stands apart for me guardians I, think a lot of people. I agree but that's just because it adds great humor and just the cast was excellent well so, i don't even i think professional wrestlers being in movies is the worst idea ever but batista did such a good job he really did because but you know why it worked? Because that character is supposed to feel sort of stiff and unnatural. Right. So it's perfect casting. It was. It was a really, really good idea. And uh, I, I'm actually, I'm actually, it's the first time I've actually been glad they got a wrestler instead of a real actor because I don't think that works if you have an actor an trying actor? to be unnatural. Yeah. yeah. When he just like is naturally bad at acting, it yeah. just. Makes so much sense. Yeah, I re uh, as far as the other ones, Iron Man, I think everyone likes Iron Man. Some people really hated the sequels to Iron Man, but I like both Iron Man 2 and 3 for different I, reasons. I, I like them. Obviously, 2 is, I think, the weakest of the films. I think I'd agree with that. But, uh, but it's not bad by any no. means. I, I wouldn't say any of them are bad. I'd say the worst one's the first Captain America, and they make it up for it with Winter Soldier, which is great. I agree. Great. Um, so. People don't like Iron Man 3 because they talk about it. It's Iron Man's barely in it. It's a Tony Stark movie. But if I you like say that. that, that's the point of the movie. The point of the movie is Tony Stark is dealing with his um, post-traumatic stress yeah. from Avengers, and now he's trying to find out who he is beyond Iron Man. And he comes yeah. to the conclusion, even without the suit, I'm Iron Man. I don't need the suit to be a hero. It's who I am. And that's cool. Um... And I get people were mad about the whole Mandarin twist. However, I actually watched the Marvel one shot that takes place right after uh, that. They untwisted the twist. They untwisted it. There is a real Mandarin in the Marvel universe somewhere, right. which, is, which is... I, I hope comes into it because I'd like to see him fully realized at some point. Yeah, I just think Ben Kingsley played such a good fake Mandarin that we're yeah. all like, no. Uh, but I didn't really like the part. I didn't like. I didn't hate having. Um, I didn't hate having the twist be that Mandarin wasn't a thing. It just the the main villain Guy Pierce didn't really do it for me. Yeah, he it was, was a weak, weak villain. And, I, but I did like seeing all the suits. But uh, and I and I get that that's like a preclude to the Ultron stuff that they're going into. And they had to show you like why this is gonna be an issue eventually. Um, but I don't know. I think the climax just wasn't good. The movie as a whole was good, but I don't think where we got to in that film particularly meant anything to me. I agree. I think the biggest problem with the Iron Man series is the villains, and I think that's a huge problem with uh, all the Avengers movies, is the villains tend to be pretty weak, except for Loki. Loki's pretty much the exception. Um, yeah, and I and, and frankly, the fact that they keep going back to him is, is good with me. Yeah, Loki's fine. I think Ultron looks really good, though. Yeah, Ultron looks really incredible. So I'm hoping he be... What, what you need is when you get to Infinity War, Thanos is going to be good no matter what, because they have... Oh, I forget his name. Um, he was in Men in Black 3. He was, uh... I don't know his name. He's instead of... He was a, instead of Agent K. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? Yes. Uh, he's Thanos, and I think he's doing oh, a really good uh, job so uh, far. Um, Josh Brolin. Yeah, I think he's going to make a good Thanos. Um, and... Um... 
what was I going to say? I'm hoping we get to the point where they have enough good villains that they can have a villain team up in the Avengers. Yeah. But as of right now, they've killed off most of them. You could have Red Skull, but I've heard uh, Red Skull doesn't want to come back and do it again because he hated the process of getting into makeup. Uh, again, I forget his name. He's the guy from The Matrix. He's Agent Smith. Oh, yeah. He hated getting into makeup. Hugo every Weaving? Hugo Weaving. He doesn't want to come back, which kind of sucks because he was okay in Captain America. But again, I kind of have problems with that movie. It's just not as interesting. Thor, I think, is pretty good. Thor, people have mixed opinions on. Thor 1 was a good game. Thor 1 was a good movie. Um, it had that fish-out-of-water comedy, and that's what the Marvel series is good at. Action movies with good comedy. Uh, Thor 2, I watched it again. The first time I watched it, I really didn't like it. I thought it was boring. But watching it again, no, it's a, it's a good entry in the series. It's not what you would show people if you're just introducing them to the Marvel yeah. series, but it's all right. Again, it's a problem of villain. The villain, Malekith, or whatever, played by Christopher Eccleston, just not interesting, which kind of sucks, because I like Christopher Christopher Eccleston from Doctor Who. He just made a shitty villain. Right. I, and that's not his fault. I think it was just written pretty generic yeah, villain. Was, it was generic villain. It, it felt, I mean, and if, if I'm going to say one thing was wrong with the Guardians, that it was the villain. But I like that villain. You know why? I like the villain, but they didn't realize it. Like, it, it wasn't... But that's the point. In, in Guardians, it works because it's not taking itself seriously the only person who takes himself seriously is in that villain. movie is the villain yeah. and he's so overblown and i am going to create justice upon the you know the nova planet whatever yeah. he the joke is almost he takes himself so goddamn seriously it's ridiculous um and then at the end when chris pratt star lord is doing the dance off with him and he's just like right. what are you doing and he just doesn't know how to react because he's such a serious stoic person yeah that's, I think even, even though he's being played the straight man, I think that's hilarious. That's what makes it funny within the context of the movie. Um, but so far, the only good villains, Loki, uh, Thanos, and we've only barely seen him, and, uh, hopefully Ultron next month. I don't know. Oh, also Winter Soldier, really good, but he's not really a villain anymore, and if you know anything about the comics, he eventually kind of becomes Captain America when Steve Rogers, I think, dies. Uh, I, what I hope is that it, because Chris Evans' contract is running out, I hope the guy who played Bucky uh, is is the next captain. Because yeah. I think I think that would go well. Mm -hmm. I think I think he he did a good job. Totally. Um, I think what be what'll be interesting too is the future of the series because a lot of these people's contracts are running out and they're really gonna have to step their game up in introducing new heroes because Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange is the best casting decision I've heard right. since probably Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Yeah, I, I think hopefully it, it works out and and it's it's one of those may like maybe he's like you know how the Joker just worked? Yeah. And that was, like, one of those great casting moments? I feel like Doctor Strange is one of those characters not a lot of people are very, that familiar with or right. care about. But I think because it's Cumberbatch, and, and from what I know about Doctor Strange, I think that it could make it just really, really interesting. And I, I think you could have another Guardians on your hands if you... What? Shotgun. For free. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, I think that'll be good. We'll see how Bra we'll see how Black Panther ends up going. I'm a little skeptical of some of the later ones. But we'll see. You're Super Supergirl might be good. Not Supergirl. What's it? Um, uh, Captain Marvel, who is the female, uh, yeah. kind of, not kind of like Superman, I guess. I don't I don't know how to describe it. I don't know that much about her. But it should be good. At least until uh, Avengers 3. After that, I have no idea where the series is going. The DC movies? I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty wary of uh, Batman vs. Superman. Even though I'm excited for it, I also don't think that they've done very good so far. Green Lantern was just awful. Um, is Green Lantern still in canon? No, I don't think so. But I'm just saying their track record, it's still the same people producing it and making it, you know what right. I mean? I liked I liked Man of Steel, though. Man of Steel was okay, but it, honestly... It wasn't great. It, do, it pales in comparison to a lot of the things the Marvel movies have done in terms of just well, entertainment. No, absolutely, but but what was the... the, the the first Marvel movie really was was Iron Man, right? And then you had yeah. Captain America. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if we're taking if we're taking the first Iron Man, yeah, that's I think that's an anomaly. But uh, what you see out of them with Captain America was was a worse film than Man of Steel. 
So I think if you're if you're in the middle of those for your very first attempt, I think you're doing all right. I don't think I don't think they're in a bad place. I I. They have a harder universe to work with, though. Marvel yeah. can be more silly. out there and yeah. silly, and but I'm know. just worried they're gonna try and make it too stoic. It's still a comic book movie at the end of the day, and it needs to be fun. Jared Leto as the Joker, though, is gonna be really good. I think. What I think, I think the Joker is going to be the thing that that lightens it up. Probably, but I hope it's still really dark for the Joker. It's DC is a balancing act of of tone because you do need comedy. There are always going to be com comedic characters in that universe, especially, like, look at The Flash, you know? Yeah, The Flash is my favorite character from that. But, uh... But, but, but I don't... But the TV series sucks balls. Yeah, I don't like the show. Anyway, uh, other than the Marvel and superhero things of which we've been talking uh, without end, young adult novel movies, uh, I think that's hard to talk about in general because I think... Like, The Fault in Our Stars was okay. Uh, fuck. I think The Fault in Our Stars was okay. Not as good as some people raved about the, it. The book? The the movie. Oh, I didn't see it. the movie. It's okay. But it kind of made the dialogues uh, step out as more... The dialogue was the number one thing I know, about the book that was awesome. I like it, but when you hear it come out of actual actors' mouths, you realize, wow, nobody talks like this in real life. It so makes they it, didn't pull it off? Not really. It makes a good read, but when you really look at someone trying to pull it off naturally, you kind of realize this is kind of how idealized teenagers talk. This is not how any real teenagers talk well, to in each the other. In the book, Fault in Our Stars, what I got from it is that they were, they were both putting it on. For the other party, and then but it, because but when shit still... gets bad, in in Fault in Our Stars, they they stop talking like that. Yeah, but it, so, it still came off a little. I get it. I could see how in film that if you don't do that correctly, it doesn't. Yeah, totally. It doesn't come. Across. Uh, Hunger Games. I like that series. That's pretty good. I was surprised I liked the Hunger Games films. Uh, I think they have problems. I think the books have problems too, but it's not bad. Bummer. Uh, other than that, those are the only young adult novel movies I've really seen. For the record, Hugo's the one that keeps failing these. Yeah, I'm really bad at this. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? I think that's it for the movies. Like, there have been some really good uh, smaller movies. Not smaller. Smaller is the wrong word. Not blockbuster movies, but like yeah. Oscar movies, let's say. Birdman was pretty good. I didn't see it. It's good. Um, I think that's the one that won Best Picture this year. Yeah. That was good. I really I watched Theory of Everything, the Stephen Hawking Great story. Call. I saw that with my lady friend. That was very good. I think the guy who played who oh, played he did Hawking a, he did, a great did job. an incredible job. And and uh, what's her face that played his wife did a really great job too. Yeah, it makes me really. The thing about life stories is you always know it's dramatized yeah, and stuff, I mean, it, and it's overblown, but. For the story they were trying to tell, I think they did a good job. Also, with true stories, you always have the problem of you kind of gl glance over the bad things, at least the bad things that don't amount to something. Oh, for yeah, instance, for sure. he ended up leaving his wife, obviously, uh, and he married his nurse, who was nice to him in that movie. Right. Which is kind of implied in the movie. Oh, However, yeah. Yeah, no. he left that wife, too, and there were rumors that she abused him. Yeah, so because, like... like He's, he's trapped in a wheelchair, and she was kind of a crazy person. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's too bad. The, the thing about it is, though, I really like the end of that film. When he gets up out of the chair, and he's... No, well, yeah, the, the, the part where, where it it's becomes art yeah. to me is that ending where he'll, uh, he kind of stands up, and he has this moment where he's just trying to pick up a pen, and uh, it's it's just... I don't know. It's it's one of those interesting moments uh, where he's daydreaming about being able to do things again. And I think I think that made the the relatively corny ending with his with his estranged wife. Uh, it kind of made up for the the cliche of it. Yeah, that makes sense. For some reason, I, I kind of wanted it to go further. I don't know how much further it could have gone because it's not like he's dead. He's still alive. Right. But it just felt kind of like it petered out. Not in a bad way. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. No, it was, it was kinda, definitely a good movie. It just... It had a thematic conclusion. It just didn't have a... How do I put it? I felt like it was really open-ended, which maybe that's the point because he is still alive and whatever. But no, like his story is not done or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, It was a good movie overall. It was a very good movie. Oh, absolutely. A little long. 
What, how long was it? It was like that was like hours. It was, no, that was over two, but it felt longer. It felt like two and a half. Also, I could have gone for some subtitles when he was having trouble starting to speak. Yeah, yeah, that definitely would have helped, I think. And don't get me wrong, he did a really good job of portraying that and the pain, but sometimes it's just like, I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, but I think I think what they did is is uh, she did a really good job of I get it. understanding for you and then yeah. reacting to it, then you can kind of piece it together. Yeah. Anyway, good movie. And I think this is our last question. Yeah. Arundil asks, Hey Hugo, some gaming questions for you. What console handhelds do you own? Which do you still want to get? And if you had to pick a favorite console and favorite handheld, which would you pick? Uh, the ones I have right now are PlayStation 4 and that's it. Uh, and I do pl have some Steam stuff, but it's just on my laptop so I can play pretty much only indie games or games from like years ago. Um, yeah. the game, the things I want to get, I'd like to get a Wii U, because I do like first party Mario stuff, and Mario Kart, and Smash Brothers, and I think that's fun. Uh, and I'd also, if I could afford it, and have the time to research it, I'd love to build a gaming PC, but I just have no knowledge in that area, and it's a ton of work. Not a ton of work, I shouldn't say that, I know people are gonna be like, it's not that much work. Eh, I, I'd have to research it. It's a it. lot of work. Um, but someday I'd like to do that. Uh, as far as favorite ever, uh, I'd say my PlayStation 4 is pretty good. I mean, the, the only problem with that is the lack of games as of right now, but that's a, that, that, always that happens at the beginning of cycles, but I, I enjoy the functionality for the most part. Um, is it better, is it better, uh, would you say, than your, shit, than your other, um, what, than my Xbox? Yeah, like like because you know how the 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 kind of the menu system is is what everyone bitched about for regular for PlayStation Three. Yeah, is it better now? Do you think? I think it's a little better. PlayStation Four has a lot long way to go as far as their menus because the whole games library you can never delete anything. So if you've ever rented a game or borrowed a game from a friend, it's on that list forever. And if you, it's not one of your most recent played games, you have to go into the whole list of every game you've ever put in your system and find that game to play it, which is a pain in the ass. So they need a folder system, which they have not implemented yet. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty simple. You put a disc in, it's there to play. You know, you have your media right next to it. And you have the PlayStation Store is pretty close. It's not bad. It's just there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, and I, I, I like it better than my Xbox 360, which I had last generation, because that thing ran super hot and super loud. And, yeah, but uh, that was always fun. I don't, I don't know. Jake has a PlayStation Three. So. Yeah, I, I, I usually don't get the uh, the next gen consoles when they come out. It's just, I can understand that. Yeah, it doesn't do it for me. No, it was a really fucking hard level, by the way. And I hate zombies. And handheld wise, I used to have a DS. I had an original DS that uh, when they first came out. Since then, I uh, haven't really played. I'm not a handheld guy. I always think. Why am I playing this on handheld when I could easily play this a better game at home? I'm never like sitting anywhere like, man, I wish I had a game to play. Yeah, very rarely do I do I think a handheld is the only one I've ever really enjoyed is like a Pokemon game. Yeah, Pokemon's always fun, but even then, like, emulators for like computer do it, and I've done that. I actually have an emulator on my phone that I play uh, like first through fourth gen Pokemon games on. For fuck's sake, I have, I have a Nintendo 64 emulator on my phone at this point, so... Yeah. So a lot of stuff you can do, but... I don't know, um, not a handheld guy. But I really do enjoy games, and I'm glad we could come here and play a game today. Yeah, we'll I probably think... do this one more time, or maybe a couple times, depends on, uh... How sick we get of this game. Yeah, if you want to ask us any, like, gaming-specific questions, or even just entertainment-specific questions, yeah. in the comments of this one, we'll tackle them next time for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We like talking about this, and it's also kind of a bridge to get us back into doing the whole unpopular culture thing. Yeah. And uh, But uh, we figured it was kind of inappropriate to do it for the other channel, and more of you would see it if we did it for this channel, uh, yeah. because this game's kind of neat, and as you can see, you beat up zombies with Judas and Jesus and yeah. level up. So, totally. Good times. So, thanks everyone for watching. 
You can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You could follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. You can always check out our Patreon, which we've talked about before. We yeah. changed the rewards uh, yep. for the ten and fifteen. Ten dollars per video gets you a chick track that we will sign and annotate. Yeah. Uh, and fifteen dollars instead of an annotated Bible will now get you a special edition T-shirt for patrons only. Yeah. Made by the artist who is doing all the art for the upcoming TBR video game. Which we'll probably play on here, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. That makes we sense. Will. Uh, other than that, I think that's it. That is it. Uh, also, if you're waiting on your, your Bibles from last time, don't worry, you're still getting them, pa- Patreon people. Yes. We're, uh, we, We're in the process of annotating yeah, and them and getting them. By out. the time this comes out, we will, would have already sent out probably several of them. Several of them, probably yeah. at least 10 of them we will yeah. have sent out, but we have about 30 to do. Yeah. So, it take uh, a little bit of time. Yeah. But... So bear in mind, you know, give it a month or two to make sure that yeah. the shipping, because some of the shipping is to other countries too, which definitely takes longer. Yeah. Anyway, until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been The Bible Reloaded. Playing Fists of Jesus.